Bonjour et bienvenue dans les rubriques de G. C'est un plaisir de vous retrouver aujourd'hui pour une interview exceptionnelle en compagnie de Anto Le Webed. Anto Webed, comment tu vas, mon ami Extrêmement bien. Voilà, extrêmement bien. Hein comme on peut le, le, je pense hein, le... que tu vas bien. Hein <rire> J'en suis certain. Et euh, nous avons aussi. évidemment le, le plaisir d'accueillir Jeff Jones et Gary Frank de Ghost Machine. How are you, guys Good, how are you Good, thank you. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, I'm just a little bit uh, nervous, but it's normal because uh, I don't speak English very well. But um, it's a, it's a great honor to uh, to to have the, the possibilities to ask you many questions and talk with you about Ghost Machine. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, for coming. Thank you. Uh, on commence les questions. Oui. Allez, c'est parti. The first, it's for me. Euh, donc, en français, euh, bien évidemment. Euh, à quel moment l'idée de créer Mad Ghost est arrivée et quand avez-vous décidé de faire évoluer Mad Ghost en Ghost Machine Great question. Uh, great question. Um, Mad Ghost really started when, I mean, it started way back when Gary and I were talking about doing, you know, Geiger. Um, And Mad Ghost was, it's, it kind of started with, with Geiger and then Junkyard Joe. And as Gary and I were working on our books and for Image, which, which we really enjoyed doing, we started talking to Brian Hitch and Jason Fabach and all the other creators that are now part of Ghost Machine about, I mean, it was, Gary, it was two years ago at least now, right? Yeah, at least. Two, yeah. Years, two years ago, we started talking just, if we were going to all, try and do something together what would it look like what, what how would we build a a new a new company a new with comic creators today how, what would it, what, what would go beyond just creator own books and it was like well a creator owned company a creator run company and and so we spent a lot of time you know building ghost machine gary actually came up with the name ghost machine uh we debated what the name would be because we couldn't keep it mad ghost because that was just Gary and me kind of doing our thing. And so when it was everybody else, it had to evolve into something brand new because it was beyond Gary and myself. It was all of us. And so ghost machine, eventually I like that the, the word ghost to me is so important. It's about passion and like, uh, you know, the, the unquantifiable like creativity that you can't, you can't like create a re recreate. It's all individual from everybody. Like no one's going to be, The artistic genius that Gary Frank is, he's unique, you know, and so that is the, to me, that is the, the, the reason we kept ghost and ghost machine, the phrase ghost in the machine came from a French philosopher, actually in 1949, Descartes, and he, uh, he, he coined the phrase ghost in the machine, which meant spirit in the body. And then later in the eighties, uh, programmers took it. And when a program wouldn't do what it was programmed to do or told to do, And it would re kind of rebel in this way they couldn't explain inside a computer they say there's a ghost in the machine and that's how we feel we feel like we're the ghost we're the we're the the creativity that passion you can't quantify and the machine is you know everything else every the machine is like the the whether it's the device that you get your stories through and watch them or it's the the, the, the world that tries to put constraints on everything or just the the construct of our company and who we are the ghost in the machine is this kind of next this third meaning of ghost in the machine is this you know the creativity un unbridled and uncontrolled and in and in control of our own destiny so ghost machine evolved out of that okay i don't know that i've got much um, i don't know that there's much to add but yeah just the, the emphasis on it i mean normally a company would be Uh, um, you know, the actual creators are kind of like the almost they're somewhere low down on the totem pole. It, 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 companies are run by executives and they're run by, um, you know, people who understand business and how to run a company. And then the last thing which is kind of brought in is the are the creative people to actually make the products, to make the books. Whereas we, we, with us, it's the other way around. It starts with the create with the creators and it starts with that. And that informs the spirit of the company. Everything else is then kind of added on as a way to facilitate what, what we need, which is uh, uh, just a, a platform through which we can tell the stories. 
Donc la première fois que vous avez commencé à travailler ensemble, c'était sur la série Avengers de 2003. Euh, avec Geiger et Junkyard Joe, vous êtes libre de créer tout ce que vous souhaitez. Comment est-ce que vous partagez les rôles au sein de cette création et quelles sont vos influences respectives um... It's, uh, it's it's funny that we, we were talking about this a little bit today, how we kind of, it, it feels almost like a kind of an, a, a, a shot of adrenaline to be working on this this stuff. Now, the freedom that it gives you and the fact that you're kind of, um, uh, everything is kind of pushed aside to allow the creative process. We don't have to worry about the, you know, day-to-day -day things. Uh, um, we're, in, we're in kind of control of the destiny. It, in, as far as influences, I mean, we talked in, a lot in the early days about things which we kind of wanted to inform the, the style of a Geiger, things which were um, things which were interested. We talked about kind of, you know, the, the, some of the post-apocalyptic stuff and the futuristic stuff. We talked about Mad Max, but funnily enough, one of the things that we kept coming back to we, was we talked about True Grit, the, uh, um, because it, even though Geiger is ostensibly a science fiction story, it's kind of the, the the flavor is very much that of a western and the original story um of the miniseries where we have um geiger kind of like looking after these these two kids and kind of reluctantly taking them under his wing was uh, echoed a, a, a lot in the uh, or it was an echo very much of the uh the true grit storyline and rooster cogburn this kind of like crusty old uh tough guy uh and then um Yeah, kind of taking take, taking a, you know a young person under his wing. So it was there were there were lots of kind of um, influences. I don't know if you can remember too much more, Jeff, about the the other things we spoke about in those early days. Yeah, I mean the early days it was the westerns. Like we talked a lot about um, uh, the story in True Grit, the original one, and John Wayne's character, and we talked about. Um, Talked a little bit about Mad Max and the emotional resonance that Mad Max had, which I, I always loved, that first one. Um, such a wonderful film. And um, and we talked a lot about family and protection and how do you, and the world today, how crazy the world seems. And we wanted to kind of reflect that. And obviously a genre is making it even more um, dangerous and heightened because that's what's fun about comic books is the visuals uh, it was that core that core influence and that core mindset of how do you protect your family in a world you can't control in a world that's getting more and more dangerous in a world that you can't understand in a world that seems to be evolving and then it was you know made into a, a comic book and and how do you balance that How do you balance yourself when you are in a world that is toxic? Do you have to become toxic to exist in that world? In New Story, excuse me. Uh, in New Story, we we um, we we feel the family is very very important in yeah. Ghost Machine, in Geiger, but uh, in your career, co comics, uh, in all uh, your comics, and it's very important for you, and um, it's very important for uh, for the, the the readers. For je sais pas si on dit comme ça, but it's very important for me to uh, to to see that uh, to see that. Uh, my career the, started. The yeah, it started with family. I mean, my first comic book, Star Girl, obviously was created mm -hmm. because of my sister. But I, I think yes, family, yeah. family is, it's it's kind of it's kind of whether it's re, it's 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 whether it's it's family you're born with or found family. It's always a the connection of people is just that's that's what it's all about: connection and caring about other people. And that's where that's really where all stories kind of for me come from. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it, that's important as well to not get it, um, too distracted because by what type of genre it's happening because you can tell those stories in any genre, so uh, it, it doesn't have to be a a post nuclear thing. It doesn't have to be a superhero universe. It doesn't have to be any anything. If you start with a core and the core is about humanity, some kind of a human uh, human element, then everything else is kind of you you can bring that in and you can bend that around and you can use that to to. To, to help tell the story, but the core always has to be there. The human core always has to be there. Uh, alors, qu'est-ce qui vous a poussé uh, à vouloir créer un nouvel univers partagé, à vouloir créer The Unnamed, et pourquoi avoir choisi Geiger comme porte-étendard de ce nouvel univers? Gary, do you want to start? Do you want me to start? Um, it's up to you. Uh, 
you probably you better, it's better if you start because I think it was more the, the 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 unnamed thing and everything was more kind of like plans and other stories that you had. Well, it it all started with just different story ideas and characters. For, for Gary and I, we we wanted to tell like there was a Geiger story, and we had definitely planted the seeds for things like Junkyard Joe, and um, ultimately Redcoat. But the idea of doing characters not in in, in in less a shared universe and more a shared history, right? Because we have that timeline that starts at the birth of America in 1776 with Redcoat and extends all the way to the end of America with Geiger. And then there's all these characters and stories in between of the unnamed. And I always liked these kind of mythic tall tale characters in American history like Paul Bunyan and John Henry and Pecos Bill, like it was always fun to hear about these American legends. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to take some inspiration from those original stories and reveal more modern, sophisticated, deeper characters that existed within America's history from the beginning to the end. And to start at the end with Geiger, I thought was that was kind of just organic because that was what Gary and I landed on. And then the rest of it started to fill itself in, you know, um, and, and it wasn't until the last issue of Geiger, Geiger six, that we really revealed the timeline. People are like, oh, yeah, you revealed the timeline in issue one. And I was like, no, we, we actually didn't put it out there until issue six because we were still formulating it all. But it was always an idea to have have these stories told throughout throughout America's history. And, and these characters, if you look at it, each one's born from war. Every character is born from war. You know, Redcoat's born from the American Revolution. Junkyard Joe's born mm. from the Vietnam War. Geiger's born from the Unknown War. And there are other characters that are in here from the Cold War, from World War II, from the Civil War. All these characters are born out of war because war is an origin for people. War is a moment where your life changes forever. And you mm -hmm. come out of it differently. You have different relationships, different viewpoints. You have trauma. You have victory. You have loss. And so having characters born out of the wars throughout America's history and beyond it, the world's history, it, it just felt interesting. There's a lot to say about people and humanity and life and and, and it's universal to me, these stories. That's why emotion and connection with other people is, is so important because that is what life is. Life is all about connecting with others. That's why we're doing this right now. That's why you two found each other to do this together because you guys shared a passion, right? Became friends and like, that's, mm -hmm. Gary and I, that's how Gary and I, like I was a fan of Gary's work when he was on The Incredible Hulk and Supergirl and all these other books. And I, I kept asking Tom Brevoort, our, our editor on Avengers, I'd love to work with who he's like, who would you like to work with? I'm like, Gary Frank, one of my favorite artists, Gary Frank. And then <laughs> Bye. And, and, I, and, and, and I got lucky enough to, we, we had some fun on Avengers, a couple of Avengers issues, but it was really when we got on this and I bugged him for years after that. Hey, do you want to come do something at DC? Cause I was, I was locked up at DC and he was locked up at Marvel. And eventually then we got to go do Superman and the rest was like, we just, I remember we hit that first issue and it was like, we were up, up and away like Superman. It was, that was that, that one issue. It's like, we were, I'll never forget that first issue came together, it came out. It was like, boom. Like we just, we just, we wanted to tell the same kinds of stories, you know, yeah. and it's emotional stories. And so it, all of it's born out of emotion. All of it's born, born out of life. Like the biggest, there's always influences from film and comics and everything else, but life is the biggest influence, yeah. but that's where the unnamed, came from is, is to create something new and different is like mm. characters i like history too so like characters in the shared history rather than just a shared universe a shared like a shared history is just it's just new and different and cooler uh, maybe if i just before gary if i just can, can just tell something um the way you create the the teasing uh, in uh in the Geiger number six, uh, as you said earlier, um, it's very interesting because it reminds me very well about the Shyamalan trilogy, uh, Unbreakable, Split, uh, and the way they create the teasing at the end of the second film for the, this great shared universe, 
And uh, I was wondering if it was uh, maybe uh, uh, an inspiration because we were talking about uh, influences, uh, or maybe you just have this plan uh, at the uh, from the beginning and uh, it was uh, like this and uh, nothing else. It, it definitely, it definitely was a evolution. There was always ideas to, to create all these characters because Junkyard Joe is in the very first issue, and there's mentions of if you actually look at the very first panel. Hmm. I had the timeline already done. If you look at the very first panel in Geiger, and the trade is, well, I have the trade. Hold on, it's right I, here. I have it right here. The very first. Um, this is how far back it goes. Is if you read this, all these news, mm. these news balloons, each one is actually referring to um, one of these. So if you read those news balloons, it was all set up in issue one on page, I think that's page four or five. Can, can, I, can I ask, did, did, um, do you mean the, 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 um, the, number six of the junkyard joe series where we hit, hinted at the others coming in because that seems uh like the the uh, m night Shyamalan thing rather than the guy you want it was the end of the junkyard joe series where we suddenly see these other characters that we already oh that one the northerner one oh yeah well, both actually both both of them uh, are yeah i mean the other ones are much more uh less subtle um yeah it, that there's something to come yeah our goal really is though to, to introduce these titles like geiger and red coat and Junkyard Joe and make them really great characters all on their own is that they have their own title, they have their own story, their own thematic, their own supporting cast, their own feel, their own time. Our goal was not to just cram all these characters together and, and have them cross over and meet and stuff because it's not about that, even though that's the potential that these stories can, can lead to. We really want Redcoat and Geiger and Junkyard Joe and the other books in the unnamed universe to feel like their own titles, their own real things. It's not about necessarily crossing them all over. There's things that connect them, but it, but we wanted the books to live on their own, be great books by themselves. It's really important. Avec Junkyard Joe, on a pu lire les témoignages de membres du staff qui parlaient de leurs parents ayant servi en fait sous les drapeaux. On a vu passer de votre part une magnifique initiative pour reverser une partie des bénéfices à une association euh, de, de vétérans. Et est-ce que c'est un moyen pour vous d'être, euh, entre guillemets, euh, à la hauteur des valeurs des héros que vous créez I'd say it was more of, a, if we're going to, yeah, I mean, in some, in some ways, it's really though, they're, they're like, for us, doing a story about veterans, you know, you do stories about things that are important to you and things that you want to share with the world and things you want others to think about. But doing a story about veterans within Junkyard Joe, and it's so specifically that experience, um, we it just felt we should try and do as much as we can for beyond just telling stories about veterans, like, and veterans, you know, homeless veterans and searching for homes that's the whole theme of it is where is your home and what do you do after war and and so we wanted to we wanted to seek out organizations like the national coalition of homeless veterans and veteran aid and and you know raise money and help any way we could and so that's so we decided to do that but it was more about living up to it's more about helping those heroes and those people um, than anything else. And, and we still do it. We have Junkyard Joe's shirts on our ghost machine store that we sell and raise money. And we sell those and we, we've raised, I mean, we've raised a lot of, quite a lot of money for them at this point, And we're going to continue to do so. It's important to us. It's a very good action. Uh, thank you to, to do that. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Thanks to everyone who served. Peut-être une question cette fois uh, pour les pour les deux peut-être. Euh, dans Redcoat, on s'aperçoit que le héros, Simon Pure, euh, est aussi le narrateur de sa propre histoire, euh, donc l'histoire d'un immortel qui traverse les siècles. Euh, son caractère semble assez désinvolte, un peu, un peu lâche, un peu coward, euh, et le ton de la série a l'air très différent de celui justement de Geiger et de Joe, qui sont beaucoup plus sérieux. Euh, pourquoi avoir choisi cet axe euh, volontairement différent, ou pas d'ailleurs volontairement, et, et aviez-vous aviez déjà en tête, euh, enfin pardon, avez-vous déjà en tête les caractéristiques 
des prochains personnages de la saga The Unnamed. Uh, I'll start with, yeah, um, so all the other unnamed characters, yes, we know their characteristics and how they fit into it and what they're like, and they all have different roles. And one of the one of the things I think specifically, if you look at Geiger and Simon, they are very different characters by design. Geiger cares so much, right? He cares, he, he, he cares so much about his family and his and, and, and people. And there's this innate, even though he tries not to, he can't help but care about others. He always, whenever he's faced with a choice to help somebody or not, he just can't help it but help somebody, right? And I love it because he's like, he knows it's going to bring him trouble. He knows it's going to be hard, but he just can't help but help somebody. It's just, he cannot turn away. And you see it in, I mean, Gary, we're on issue five right now. You see it in every issue. Whenever there's someone in trouble, even if he's like, he's on a mission or he's off doing, or he, it's somebody that he doesn't even pretend to care about, but yet there's something in him that just cares about others and he can't help but be drawn to assisting or helping or connecting with that person. Um, he needs them, doesn't he? He, needs, he, he needs somebody to keep reminding him that he's human. He needs he to have somebody to keep to bringing him back from the monster. Yeah, and, and and there's something, Gary and I were talking about this this morning, there's something really cool about having a, a character who is this contrast between a very brutal, violent human being, and yet a very caring, intelligent, compassionate human human being. Like he's like the, he's like the he's like the opposite ends of the spectrum in one person because of his experiences and who he is and what he's suffered through. That's fascinating. So every issue is like a really there's a heartwarming moment and there's like a really violent moment, and so he's this fascinating character to live with and be with. Because you always kind of know what he's going to do. And then he he'll, once in a while do something you, you didn't expect because you think you know who he is. But then he it, it's really fun. With Simon, it's the opposite. He could, he cares about nobody. And his life is his life. His, his own life isn't even precious, literally, because he can get shot in the head or burned at the stake and he comes right back. So he doesn't value life at all, including his own. He has no value for life. And so you've got these two characters that could not be more different. And with Redcoat, the humor of it all, the tone of it, the narration, it, it happened because Brian Hitch and I were talking about Simon and, and it, it was just kind of, this guy is just kind of funny and his viewpoint is, is funny. And the humor came out of these conversations about someone who just never learns and he's always in a mess and he does it to himself completely. But it really came because the character Simon, when I was writing, he just would not shut up. He would just kept talking to me. And I have to just listen to Simon. And I'm like, he will not shut up about this scene. And that's really fun. It's fun when a character just won't stop talking to you. <laughs> you know, does he talk with Brian's voice? He does often. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. Brian's voice. I mean, I, with, I, read, him, I read, read him with. Uh, yeah. Brian's it's voice it's really. Head. But he's such a specific character, much like Geiger. And it's the this is why these characters, like, this is what we started Ghost Machine for is, is characters. It was not a concept like the house on the hill or like, you know, the the you know, the 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 clock strikes midnight. It, it was like character, right? Geiger, Redcoat, Rook, Junkyard Joe, the Rocket Fellers, like. We really, we really are all about characters. Even in our horror books, it's about characters. Um, but it, for us, it was a, it was kind of creating these great characters that just speak to you because then you know exactly what kind of adventures they're going to go on. Like I just want to be with Geiger as he treks across this wasteland of America now and, and encounters things, and you see him grow and change and affect others. And the same with Simon as he kind of stumbles through life, decade after decade, and eventually starts to learn things and and that's what his whole journey is is about learning geiger it's more about his journey is more about like recognizing it's it's okay to still be he, he's human and he feels human and recognizing that it's like like not even accepting that he's still human but but giving himself i think giving himself the the acknowledgement that yes he is still human it, he is still a human being even after all he's done even after what he's become he, he's allowed to say he's still a human being i think in some some sense geiger doesn't feel like he's allowed to say i'm human i think geiger thinks he's a monster 
and his journey mm. like, to, to being able to say, I, I am still human. Like, I don't know if he'll ever fully be able to say that and, and feel good about it. Mm. I'm not sure he will be. But that's sad and tragic and like, oh, man, I feel for that character. Une question, uh, a question for Gary. Gary. Just Gary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Gary, aurais-tu envie de travailler sur une autre série que Geiger ou Junkyard Joe pour Ghost Machine Oh, yeah. Say yes, say yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this is this is basically, they're gonna, um, I'm going to be drawing stuff for Ghost Machine until I retire, I think, at this point. So, oh. yeah, f um, I mean, for now, we're doing Geiger, but then I'm sure, you know, at some point in, in the future, there'll be uh, another project. And, you know, I'd like to, 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 to do other things as well. But, I mean, for now, I'm happy with Geiger. But the, but the whole world, there's just so much potential. There's so many so many possibilities for other characters that can be interesting and fun to do. So, I mean, at some point, yeah, at some point, I'll pass the Geiger torch to somebody else and uh, do something else. And uh, we will hear for read that, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, only two questions left. Uh, donc, deux questions restantes. Donc, question numéro 8. Uh, en dehors de l'univers de The Unnamed, donc on a pu lire uh, le, le formidable premier épisode de Rook Exodus, donc ça parlera peut-être un peu moins à Gary du coup, uh, donc la série que Jeff vous scénarisait avec Jason Fabok. Uh, on sent une proximité émotionnelle entre Tariq et Rook, en termes de bah, ce que vous disiez à l'instant, par rapport au fait que ce soit deux personnages solitaires qui pensent être un petit peu uh, à l'écart de l'humanité. Uh, ce rapprochement est-il volontaire Et si oui, peut-on peut-être espérer, euh, même si vous avez dit le contraire tout à l'heure, une future rencontre entre ces univers qui sont en apparence déconnectés. Um, you never say never, right? Never say never. But for now, like Rook is, it really, and we had a lot of conversations about as we were developing our books and characters, not locking everything in to, to, to having to be in the same continuity, the same universe, uh, because then it became about that. And, and like, how do you How do you, you start to like things have to connect in different ways? So we really wanted everything to live in a genre like uh, the unnamed Geiger and Redcoat and Junkyard Joe. They live in this this genre heroes, right? They're, they're very grounded human stories uh, that take place in our world, and they're they're kind of superhero adjacent, right? They're not capes and tights, but they have aspects of it. With Rook, it was very specifically the sci future sci-fi universe on a, a world that we terraformed and changed to be much like Earth in many ways, where nature was under control over to, by, by technology that falls into the wrong hands. And we talked about Rook, and we really wanted to Rook to, to be its own thing. It's sci-fi. It's like, let it be the best it can be. And when it came to like Rockefellers, who are also, they're from the future and they come back today, like let that really exist in its own you know, Pixar, Hanna-Barbera like universe where with horns being halo that Pete and Pete Tomasi and Francis and Peter Snayberg are, they're perfect for that kind of thing. Like with Super Sons and The Flash and Batman and Robin and Superman, all their work is perfect for that. And ultimately the horror stuff, let the horror stuff be its own, its own tone, its own universe. So you never say never about crossing all these things over, but it's not, our, our stories are not like, we're not, building our books to do that we're really trying to build great characters and great titles and great comic books mm. and each of them really feels like it's it's thing that it's it, they're all super important on their own they all have something to say on their own and whether they interact in the future beyond the way they are now is is you know you, there's always possibility um of course um with rook and Tariq, there's some pretty big differences between them. I think Tariq is, Tariq is much in a strange way, although on the, on the, on your first look, you might think he's, he's not a cynical person. He might act cynical. He might mm. act like he doesn't care, but the truth is he does. Um, and he, um, and he's on kind of a, a, a journey to just help people and find his humanity. Rook has no issues with his own humanity. In fact, I think he's he's got more issues with the birds that are, you know, mm -hmm. getting into his head and the betrayal that uh, the the corporation that put him here has done to him and his own sense of survival. If no one's going to look out for me, then I've got to look out for myself. 
think he's got a very different kind of attitude and and state of being and motivation than than Tariq does, although they are both somewhat loners. You know, it's a weird because Rook is, although he says he's a loner, appears to be, he's not. Hmm. He was a swine. The yeah. bird, like he, the birds, the bird, this flock of birds, and the swine's death affects him greatly in issue two and beyond. And the, the flock of birds, like there's a moment in issue two, I don't want to spoil it, but hmm. a really nice moment in issue two where you see the birds get in his head and he 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 kind of resists it and is like, I'm not gonna abandon. He doesn't know Swine's gone yet, but he's like, I'm not gonna leave without him. Even though the rocket's done, he's not gonna leave till he finds out what where Swine is. Um, so it's the, you know, as I think, and and also there's only one issue out of Rook and several of Geiger. I think mm-hmm. as the series all go, I'm I'm excited just to have the books keep coming out because you get to know the characters more and the stories mm-hmm. more, they, you see them more. But um but yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, look, there's a lot of interesting thematics with all the books. And, and one of the things that was important to us is that they're, they're they're rooted in thematics of today, not 1943 or 1968, but today. Uh, I think we might have been the only brand new characters in like the top 100 of comics in April. Like most of, the, most of them have been around since the 80s or long before. So we wanted to create, you know, these, these kind of new, new characters new worlds new everything and they're going to have these themes that that connect with what we're all going through now Jeff Jones Gary Frank Brian Nietzsche Jason Febok Evan Rice Brad Anderson Brad Melzer etc etc on a l'impression euh, d'assister à la réunion de la Justice League des créateurs de comics euh, et on sent qu'il y a une très grande maîtrise de votre part et la volonté de monter en puissance progressivement on sait qu'il va y avoir plein de belles choses qui sont prévues pour 2024 mais si on regarde un tout petit peu plus loin quelles sont vos ambitions sur le long terme I mean I'll, I'll be brief and then I'll let Gary, Gary answer um... I, I, we came together because we all share the same long-term vision of what Ghost Machine is. Like Gary said, I, this is what I'm doing. Like these are these are the books, these are the characters. I'm gonna be working on this. And all my energy is on this, which is, I have to say, so Gary and I were talking about earlier today, so rewarding and refreshing to just put everything I have into Ghost Machine, everything. I love it. Um, and our shared long-term mission is to create great characters and great comic books. That's it. The highest of quality on everything we do. We want everything we do to be quality from the paper to the art, to the story, everything, like whatever we, we do, we want it to be the best, the best out there. That's our goal. And our goal is to just create great characters like, and, and, you know, and make these books, special each one is very special we're not out to put out 90 books and 75 percent of them are junk like we we're going to put out very judiciously put out these are the books we believe in these are the characters and stories we believe in these are the creators we are and believe in and that's our goal Hmm. quality gary yeah i didn't think there's much to add to that i mean that's that that's kind of the thing i mean we talk we've talked about everybody else that's kind of joined the company and everything has been based around who is going to bring an absolute a game to, mm-hmm. to whatever book they're on. There's the, the, the idea that we would like make such a huge step as, as this, and then kind of allow it to be compromised. It's just unthinkable. We just want it to be, uh, just, just a, a core, a good quality, uh, group of, of creators producing the best work that they're possibly capable of producing and uh, so far you know we, I, we, we've seen you guys haven't seen some of the other stuff which is coming down the, the pipes from some of the other guys from the later books but I can tell you once you see some of this stuff once you see some of the art the, the, that's, that's coming it's just it's incredible stuff but everybody's doing the best work of their career yeah that's the other thing is that everyone from the creators to our editor in chief Brian Cunningham and VP of publishing Mark Mike Cotton, like everyone on the whole team is just because we all own the company together. Like it's a very small team, but it's a really powerful team of passionate and talented people. And we're we're fortunate because we kind of you know we, we we're doing this 
uh, well into our careers. We've worked with so many people and we've kind of uh, accumulated a, a bit of knowledge about how these, this person works. So we kind of, we, we, we got to, to do our pick when we were saying, well, who, we need an editor, who are we gonna get? So we, we knew who we wanted to get because we've worked with so many people. And even the people that we haven't worked with, as you start to expand, so then we're asking uh, Brian Hitch who he thinks for this role or for that role or for this book or for that book. And we're, we're building out because, and it, and it comes from a point of, of, of experience. Thank you very much, Clement. <laughs> it's yeah. a great moment of my life. Clairement, and uh, of course, of, uh, of this channel. Uh, Anto, si tu veux, uh, je te, je te, c'est le moment de dire qu'on les a, mon ami. <laughs> yeah, um, I will do it in English, maybe, uh, if, uh, if, if it's possible. Uh, so, I think obviously, you, you both uh, count uh, much for in my life of a reader, of a uh, of a passionate person by the, the comics uh, i read uh, i read comics uh, for 12 years now uh, regularly and uh, of course you were there both of you and so many others but particularly both of you uh, it's a it's a chance for me to 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 tell you that uh, today because uh, i've started dc with um for Jeff with green lantern and uh, your amazing one uh, thank you but, that made me that made uh, Al Jordan my favorite DC character uh, today and for Gary as for Gary it was in Superman uh, action comics and uh, Superman secret origin my first uh, Superman comic uh, ever uh, and, uh, on which I dis have discovered your fabulous work and uh, your, uh, your the way you portray the characters your little nod to obviously Christopher Reeve uh, I loved you the way you you complete each other and you give the um, the fantasy of uh, another life uh, separate from our traditional life uh, with all the burden and uh, the difficulties uh, there in it uh, with both of you we can dream we can live with some iconic characters and uh, most of all with all the values and uh, the need to have this person these characters uh, at the center of our life uh, that's why i love uh, particularly doomsday clock in which you you both put Superman at the center of the universe uh, again, and you give us the chance to believe uh, in the impossible. To quote, uh, to quote uh, some flash quotes. Uh, thank you. It. So thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Uh, si ça vous embête pas, uh, je vais le faire en français, and uh, ce sera mieux pour tout le monde. <laughs> it's better. It's better for me, and it's better for you. Uh, Geoff, euh, en, en premier lieu, vous êtes, euh, quand on discute un petit peu avec les copains euh, de, de qui est euh, mon scénariste préféré, Geoff Jones. Et Geoff Jones, pour, euh, euh, je pense, en fait, deux raisons principales. La première, euh, j'ai vraiment le sentiment, quand je lis vos histoires, de sentir, en fait, les valeurs qui sont les vôtres transpirées dans les personnages. Et ça, c'est très important pour moi. Et... Euh, tout simplement parce que je sens que dans ce que vous écrivez, je sens votre passion des personnages et des comics. Et je pense à mes yeux que vous êtes peut-être le, le meilleur représentant sur ces 20 dernières années de cette passion des super-héros, de cette passion des personnages. Merci beaucoup, Jean. Et JSA. Euh, I love JSA. I can talk about that for another two hours. <laughs> C'est incroyable, Jesse. Okay. Uh, et Gary, uh, I try in English. Excuse me, my English is very bad, but it's oh. important for me to try that. Um, when I was uh, a young reader, I start comics with The Incredible Hulk by Peter David. I start with uh, the work of Delkion, and I see you arrive on these comics. And for me, it's uh, uh, a moment very important in my passion. And uh, I was a young child. And many years later, uh, I was a teenager. And uh, I like so much Gen 13. And I see Gary Frank arrive on this series. Uh, it's with you. Um, uh, I love this series. I love this character. And at this moment, I say, Gary Frank, 
for the eternity <laughs> is my favorite artist. And many years later, I read Batman. Of one, yeah. Superman, Avengers, etc., etc., and now Ghost Machine. My favorite scenarist, writers, and my favorite artists are assembled for make a new company. And for me, it's amazing. It's uh, it's incredible. And uh, thank you very much um, at uh, Gary, Jeff, and Kat uh, because it's a uh, a great op opportunity uh, for my channel. Okay, but uh, it's not uh, the most important for me, but it's a great opportunity for me and for my passion. Thank you very much. It's uh, amazing for me. Thank you so Merci much. Thanks for the time, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for the nice words. Et euh, juste, bah, bon, du coup, pour conclure cette interview, euh, bah, merci infiniment à, à, à Jeff et à Gary. Un grand merci à Kate pour son professionnalisme et sa disponibilité absolument géniale. Un grand, grand merci à Ghost Machine. Euh, les Français vous aiment, les fans de comics français vous aiment et on vous souhaite le meilleur pour Ghost Machine pour les années à venir. Et merci pour votre travail et à très bientôt. Thank you. Thanks. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. And uh, that is the end. Thank you! <laughs> 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 oh, it's incredible.